There are several types of traditional bass cam. This one, called Kintoa, is marbled with fat and has a deep, strong, fruity flavor. Its distinct taste and composition begins with a specific breed of pig, the Basque Country Piebald, referring to the animal's mottled skin. This pig breed is native to the Basque region, where the livestock is raised on small farms in the valleys of the Pyrenees Mountains. Unlike commercially farmed animals, the sows have small litters of six to nine piglets. These grow roaming and grazing along the vast mountainsides, where 30 piglets wander on about a hectare of land. As a result of this free-range rearing, they grow more slowly and become heavier than commercially farmed pigs. Once the animals reach a weight about 150 kilograms, which usually takes a year to 15 months, they go to the slaughterhouse. Each carcass is then stamped with an identification number. Traditional ham is made from the hind legs. The first step is to weigh each numbered leg and tag it with a unique code. The code records the weight, the farm from which the animal came, the slaughter date, and when the carcass arrived here at the processor. After the leg has been tagged, it's placed in a machine which brands the Kintoa symbol into the flesh. Then dry salt is spread onto the exposed portion. The salt comes from the Salle de Burn, a saltwater spring in a basin bordered by the Pyrenees Mountains, the Adore River and the Atlantic Ocean. The salted ham is then left in a cold, damp room for one day per kilogram, typically about 15 days per ham. The salt preserves the meat. Next, the ham undergoes a first dry curing. It hangs on a stainless steel rack in a temperature and humidity controlled room for seven months. When it comes out of the room, it's lost about 20% of its original weight because most of the moisture has evaporated. After the surface is brushed, the exposed part of the ham is then coated with a special grease that the factory has made out of pig's kidney, rice flour and water. This grease prevents the surface from drying out and crusting during the second dry curing process. The ham now goes into a second drying room, which dries the ham in the open air, taking advantage of the geographic location. A warm southern wind from Spain and humid air from the Atlantic Ocean to the west blow into the room through windows. Nature does all the work. Humans merely regulate the airflow and humidity by raising or lowering the blinds. In this room, the ham hangs from a wooden rack rather than a stainless steel one. This is because wood absorbs excess humidity and transfers moisture to the meat if the air gets too dry. As the ham dries, its flavor concentrates. The charcutier, a pork butcher, inspects every ham carefully pressing it all over to monitor the drying process. The ham is also checked to ensure no crust is developing. The ham is also pierced in order to smell its developing aroma. The wind that dries the ham carries pollen and other natural particles that give the ham a distinctive flavor and fragrance. The secret is slow curing until the ham reaches optimal maturity. This takes approximately one month per kilogram, so the ham remains in this second drying room for more than a year. When the cured ham is ready, it's seasoned with espelette pepper, a mildly hot pepper from the northern Basque country. This gives the ham a fragrance that's as appetizing as its taste. Honestly, I'm not telling porkies.